was a dramatic opener. Hi, my name is Rowdy. My job is to eat oily rags. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I like to see what the students are doing throughout the universe. So today, I'm going to visit Glendale Unified School District through my garage o -matic viewer. You should join me. Look, here's Johnny. It's all about the kids. I mean, in today's world, there's so much that's cut from them. They need help more today than they've ever needed in their lifetime. It took about six months to analyze fundraising. We were trying to get the kids involved and saying, hey, you know what, what do you think if we could get new equipment? But, you know, could, it, could you play better and would you play better? And so their excitement all grew up and then we raised the curtain. It's the equivalent of, you know, just like the Wizard of Oz. I mean, these, ki these kids were just ecstatic. They had new equipment, now it was them and not the equipment's problem. So they had to actually produce. We come into play to try to help uh, those programs with those teachers that have a drive to bring out the very best of their students, we want to help them to, to make sure that that happens. That Johnny guy sure is nice. In my second year of GIS, I actually managed to win the Lex Seco Challenge. We had got first place in it. I think we won a total of $35,000 for our school and for college funds, so that was a really great experience. The Lex Seco Challenge gives the kids a great opportunity and provides that motivation factor for them. They actually get to apply the technology that they learn to a real world problem, and this is something that's going to transfer later on in life. Um, I learned so much from it, a lot about grant writing, writing scientific papers, the whole nine yards, and completely intend to use those skills to finish my major and hopefully go into grad school. I joined the ArcGIS program there, and I got into marine biology, and I was actually able to sail out in the boats with other marine biologists. And they do their own data collection in the field. So we bring that data back to the classroom, and we can analyze that data using other technologies. It's really neat to see the students operating the equipment. We went to a shipwreck. We were able to locate it using a side scan. And once we were there, we used remote operated vehicles on a tether 90 feet down and were able to see the creatures there without having to actually dive down. And they actually do their own fish surveys on snorkel. Um, so they compare that to the ROV surveys. That just brings them closer to, to the ocean and gives them an experience that they might not otherwise have had. Students are contributing to science by being able to actually core code it all. That was awesome! We have three focus areas in which we provide, I would say, funds to, for enrichment activities and other educational opportunities for our students, and that's in health and fitness, science and technology, and digital and performing arts. Those are things that make a student whole, so you want to keep those things in the curriculum. It's been more and more difficult for school districts to do that. We have, of course, the Walt Disney Company that helps with our animation program. We have Pacific BMW, Kiwanis, the Rotary. They all help us. Every person's dollar counts. We're really grateful for everybody who participates in the community. You know, these students are going to be in our workforce, they're going to be your neighbors, and so you want them to have the best opportunities as possible. Each of us gave back just a little bit. I can tell you make a huge difference in a kid's life and they will be eternally grateful. What an awesome community! GEF, Rotary Club, Disney, Kiwanis Club, and so many others. What's next? GenYes actually is an acronym. It stands for Generation Youth and Educators Succeeding. It's a program whose intent is to have the students help with the integration and use of technology in the classroom. It actually kind of built upon something we were already doing here at Hoover, um, which was having student kind of uh, facilitated technology support. We pride ourselves in assisting teachers, students, and staff. Uh, we went and helped some teachers had to fix some email problems. Uh, one of the first tasks we actually had was uh, we had to help the administration downstairs set up their computers, slash printers, stuff like that. So it really made me feel like a teacher instead of just like a standby student. Why yes, but Jen yes. This is actually my tenth year, uh, ninth year in this classroom. I love this program. It's been such a blessing to be a part of it because it it allows you and it exposes you to so many opportunities that you wouldn't have if you weren't in the academy. You know what? We're gonna have brand new classrooms. Yay! I'm excited. Woo! I mean, kids are gonna really benefit from it. 
The program has really grown and the excitement in the kids is just amazing. In addition to honing in on what I really want to do, it also allowed me to change actually from what I wanted to go into before. We learned things that you didn't even know existed or you didn't even know that you could figure stuff like that out. Science isn't really that much about science. It's also about really working as a group and being able to present your findings. They do so many different types of experiments that are so far beyond a high school level. I mean, they're just like gung-ho and they are going above and beyond the regular student. Those scientists kids are so smart! The first tournament that we had here at Roosevelt, there were about 10 or 12 teams, and now we're up to 22 teams from 10 schools. We found out that the schools that participated in the first Lego League had a tremendous advantage over the schools that didn't participate because they've had access to the challenge. Clark's team and the kids from CV's team provide all the manpower. Timekeepers, the Q leaders, MC, the people that run the PA, the kids do everything. It's really nice that it's driven for the students by other students. One of the things that we try to show all of the elementary school students is that there are careers available for them in tech. We talk about project-based learning, we talk about going up a mile deep into something. Give a kid a project, give them a challenge, and then you'll get to see exactly how deep they can get into something. They constantly make mistakes. When you make a mistake, it means you're that much closer to the right way to do something. But I wish that every classroom teacher in the city could see that. If you could see the looks on their faces the first time they write a program and they download it to their robot and they actually make the robots move, it's amazing. They get so happy. Those robot and kids are cool. What we do is integrate technology solutions for clients, enable them to produce, distribute, store, and automate their production process. I'm a big believer in education, and I'm a big believer in having qualified, talented students come into the industry. We decided to come up with an internship program where we hired both male and female every summer in a paid internship. The students are bright, energetic, excited. They become integral to our business and we've been using them for all aspects of actual paid work that has helped our company. They understand the technology, they show up on time, they're motivated, and they really want to learn. I think a lot of them will continue to transition in their careers and be incredibly successful. And we love our association with the Glendale Unified in general. These are my kind of guys! So we have a 96 terabyte Avid Isis 5000 server that's in our NBF. From there, the students are able to actually access and work in groups on one project. In order to serve the people, what I decided to do was start recording my lectures. And then if students missed class, they could go to Virtual Mr. Straup, you can watch this lesson that'll get you up to speed with where everyone else is. And that gives me more of an opportunity to work with the students one-on-one. -on -one. So I created Virtual Mr. Straup as a way of multiplying myself. It's what we learn in class, so it's not something you have to really look for. And if anytime you need it, it's just right there. It's very convenient. So what we've done is we've given ourselves the opportunity to specialize, to delegate work tasks, and really create an environment that's going to mirror what is being done out in the professional workplace. No one person does the whole project. Everyone needs to pull together as a team, and I think that's the most important thing that the students can learn from this and take from this. Not everyone's going to be a Steven Spielberg, but everyone can be a good, competent worker that's employable, and that's what we're going for. It looks like those kids are doing more than just eating oily rags. You guys have a special place in the city of Glendale. Keep up the good work, community members and businesses. With that kind of support, you are truly preparing your students for their futures. Here, I got it. Oh, wait.